You know, in the last episode, Zozo said that she once saw a tree that could run, but it turned out to be just a hairy old man. That sentence in general is just very weird because first off, she actually did see a tree that was a walking tree just now when we were fighting walking trees. And then second, why would you say that you once saw a tree that could run, but then say it wasn't actually a tree that could run? Zozo's just very awkward. Good morning, everybody. It's Midnight and Beyond, welcoming you back to the world of Code of Princess in the last episode. We got through a fair light village, and we had a pretty fair fight, I, if I do say so myself, now that we got ourselves some new equipable items and weapons helping us out, increasing our stats more and more. In this episode, we are going into a new mission with cat puns, apparently, as I have spoiled that as going to be a cat, because no other creature in this game could possibly have fur. No, it has to be a cat. It's the only logical conclusion. What now? A simple little stroll through this hidden passage and we'll be out of the kingdom in no time. How'd you know about this place? Believe me, I learned a lot of hiding spots running away from Marco Neko. I, I mean, uh, running away from my female fans. Yeah, those girls in the capital are wild. I, I thought you said Marco Neko. Shushy! Marco Neko? The merchant? <laughs> That's one dangerous raccoon. Dangerous? What a colorful little word. So many connotations. And I'm a cat, miss, not a raccoon. Hello. <laughs> Don't move! Maybe he hasn't seen us yet! Hello, friend. You can keep running all you want, but until you pay up, I'll always track you down. Allegro, did you borrow money from the raccoon? No! Or, yeah, but it wasn't my fault! My dad stopped giving me money! I didn't know what to do! You poor boy. So, what do we have here? Adventurers? Ooh, how fun! I am Markopolis Neko Entrepreneur. Weapons, armor, maybe something more exotic? If I don't have it, I can get it. Call on me anytime, day or night. No request is too small if <laughs> the price is right. See ya! Wait, that's it? You aren't gonna threaten me or anything? Boy, I have half the Distron army looking for me. I'm getting my fuzzy butt as far away as I can. To be perfectly honest, you should too if you know what's good for you. Bye, meow. I thought he'd never leave. Shall we go? Yep. I know a nice village outside these walls. That sounds lovely. Will you take us there? I'll take you anywhere you want me to. Any way you want it, that's the way you need it. Any way you want it. Okay, so Marco Neko, he is not necessarily a new party member, but he is the introduction to buying stuff. Yeah, we know it's all that G that we've been getting at the end of every battle. Well, now we can actually put it to good use, so we could actually buy some new weapons. Though, in the 3DS version, I remember it being kind of wonky. I guess we'll save it for when we actually are in the menu section, but for now, we're just gonna beat on some evil trees and some evil bees. The bees, I remember being super annoying just because they're kind of hard to hit, but uh, it seems they disappear as soon as we got rid of the tree. Because without the tree, there's no point in being a bee or something. I have no idea. Let's just keep on attacking them, get rid of all the little oozes. I find the hornets to be kind of difficult to get away from the bomb. The bomb makes it so uh, if it's a purple bomb, it'll uh, poison you. If it's yellow, it'll electrocute you or paralyze you. And then I think they do have just regular bombs that sometimes enemies drop. So just always want to be on the lookout for those. Uh, you can also see those boxes over here, which could sometimes contain things like treasure chests, sometimes they contain healing items. But this one contained absolutely nothing, so it's a complete waste of time. I love that the trees are just- I heard that like, uh, the crystals also heal your MP by the way. I heard that they made the, uh, AI smarter in the Switch version, but I don't know, I'm starting to question that. I know we're still like early on in the game, so maybe they aren't at their full strength yet, but still. Seems kind of wonky, if you ask me. Uh, speaking of wonky, I just love how the arms come out right here. Oh my god, I just love how everything pops out. The graphics in this game uh, very much uh, benefited to the Switch pour. I very much like how everything looks. I think the main character sprites could be a, li a little less pixelated in cutscenes, but otherwise the backgrounds look very vibrant and everything. I like how the enemies look. They all look nice. It's pretty good pour, all things considered. 
There didn't used to be monsters here. I thought those distron clowns were taking care of them. Maybe they're out to lunch. Maybe. Are your sage instincts telling you something? Oh, Allie, I'm so glad you're getting along with our new friend. Get that level up. Get that level up. Get that level up. Get nothing, Allegro, because you are in debt or something. But yes, now that we've gotten the cutscene with Marco Neko, we could go ahead and select a character. Very slow-like. Like, very Zo-like, because Zozo, no. And we can go in here. You can now shop at Marco Neko's Emporium from the equipment menu. So you just go down here and press the X button. And you have a very funny song playing as well. So here's the problem with Marco Neko's stinking item shop. Almost all of them are bad. Like, I see that there's some that are good, but for the most part, are they are just like really stinking terrible. Like, they end up downgrading a lot of things. So, I very rarely actually get things from Marco Neko that might have changed a bit in the Switch version, but like right here, we got something that's only good. So, I guess there are some good things around here. But for the most part, it seems to be just a lot of downgraded items. So, I tend to not come here all that often, but. Not to mention that everything's really sick and expensive, like if we buy just one of these things, then we're pretty much broke. So that's kind of lame, but I guess we can get this because it's a pretty good one. The exo Yuja. Oh, just yeah, like how oh, it has even that in there. Looks very funny, but yeah, I will eventually get everything from here because I want to do a 100% playthrough of this game. But it's going to take a while, that's for sure. Okay, I went ahead and gave everyone the exo Yuja. It increased everyone's uh stats so it was a pretty good purchase a good purchase i can never roll my r sometimes i just nail it but other times I just fail it but um yeah i think from here on out i'm gonna do all my item equipping in between episodes just because i don't want to waste too much time on menu screens every episode so at the start of every new episode 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 i will show you what new items and weapons i've equipped and maybe it'll be different for every character i won't stick with the exact same weapons every and equipables every single time so We'll have to wait and see, I guess. But for now, let's go ahead and start our next mission. I think we're gonna switch to Zozo this time. Oh! Uh. You all right, Zozo? Not sure. Indigestion? Someone's fighting up ahead! We should see if they need help. This mission is very singing difficult to newcomers, I'll admit, so if you end up losing it a lot, then please don't feel too bad about it because it could actually be very difficult, especially if your name is Hooli. But anyway, we gotta protect two different villagers, uh, or travelers in this scenario. So before we were just protecting Zozo, it was kind of difficult, but now we gotta protect two people, make sure they don't die, because if one of them dies, then it's game over. And of course, if we die ourselves, then it's also game over, but in the 3DS version, this guy started all the way in the middle of the bridge, but over in this version, he starts over here, making it a bit easier for you, I guess, to keep them a bit separated so you could get to one of them sooner, which is nice, so they made this one a bit easier for you, which is nice. Uh, but yeah, these guys are kind of interesting. They do a bit of damage on their own, so you don't have to worry about them being completely helpless, which is all good and dandy. Just get to this guy and make sure you lock onto him, because a lot of those attacks are directional. So if any character you want to make sure to have locked on stuff with, it is Zozo. If I could get rid of this thingy, there we go. Progress on further. And just hit this thing, zap it away, and do that. Just Zozo has so many stinking crazy attacks. I wish you got to hear her English voice when attacking though, because anytime she uses a magic attack, she's just like, here's a curse, here's a curse. And it just sounds funny, but not in the version. Hello, we got this running, jogging man. Uh, there we go. I was able to dodge his... Uh, earthquake attack because I was just floating in the air. See if you could do that now. Or you can do damage. Uh, get the electricity, which is nice. Electric does a lot of damage when you look at that. And pulls up the earth from the ground in a perfect a perfect rectangle, which looks very funny. Uh, so you can do that. Do that. I don't even know where the other guy is. He's not helping us in the slightest. At least this guy's here to help us. But there we go! Very, very easy. A lot easier in the Switch version, I'll say that. So don't feel too bad if you are stuck on that in the 3DS version. Your aid was greatly appreciated, travelers. Look at those lovely, luscious locks! 
I am shooting star Tsukikage, master of the intergalaxy blade style. Whoa, a samurai! That's a maze nuts! I'm Allegro, the bard hyphen sage. Nice to meet ya. Hi, I'm Allie, master of the, um, five finger discount style. I'm T Dragon. I study the UMA school. UMA? Ultimate Manimal Arts. I draw my power from the great beasts of legend. Up a listen. Uh, that's sort of an interesting voice clip. I don't know why it gets cut off like that. It's sort of like that thing in Sonic 2006 when it was just like how there's someone delivering a line, but then you hear them mess up the take and then they correct themselves and redo the take and it just got put into the final game. I think that's what this was supposed to be or it was just a glitch or something. I don't entirely know. It's just really stinking weird and also Master T uh, before people start making a bunch of Mr. T jokes. In the Japanese version his name actually is Mr. T. They changed it to Master to avoid copyright I guess but that's stinking funny. Remind me not to piss these two off. What a noble martial art. I'm Solange, Princess of Deluxia. My lady, you are far from Heliodor Castle. That sword. Uh, hi. How's it going? <laughs> so shiny. Do you feel the warmth? Even I feel it. And I don't have a nervous system. Huh? Who might you be? Name's Zozo. W what's that? She has the aura too. We've found another chosen one. What's going on? Our auras appear whenever the Empyrean Stone shines its light into the heavens. The what now? Uh, Empyrean Stone? It's the mother load among us thieves. Some legendary treasure in the Tower of Ren. My grandmother used to tell me stories about it. The stone's been shining its light with greater frequency these days. Allegro, you're a sage, right? Know anything about this? Oh, that Empyrean stone! Yeah! Every sage knows about it. It shines its light and stuff. It started a few years ago. That's when our auras first appeared. It's also when the monsters began to multiply, and they've been growing more violent. You think the light from the stone has something to do with the monsters? Of that I am certain. But that's not all. Mm. I have a bad feeling about this. The Empyrean Stone is being corrupted. Queen Destiny is misusing its power. Queen Destiny. I hear she's taken Deluxia. Yeah, she spread rumors about the royal family and moved right in. The people believed her promises. Outrageous! She summons monsters to her aid, even now. Mm, what do you mean? Don't you see? It's a scam. She summons them and then kills them. And the peasants rejoice. Deluxia isn't alone. My kingdom fell for the same trick. The Queen's men destroyed everything. Now it's all gone. Even the innocent little animals. And they never hurt anybody. Her promise of peace is a farce. In the end, her monsters will consume us all. Our auras are the marks of the gods. They react to the stone's light. They guide us to our destiny. It means we must stop the Queen. That is our mission. Lady Zozo, you too have been chosen. Join us and help us defeat Queen Destiny. Uh, sure? There is a condition, though. After our quest is over, you must go out with me. Nah, I, uh, I don't date. Are you crazy? Zozo, he's a samurai. Isn't that every girl's dream? Heck, I'd go out with him. He's so beautiful. Look, we're actually trying to get away from the Queen's army. And from some debt collectors. But yeah, mostly the army thing. I am a reasonable man. 
We can start out as friends and see where it goes from there. Well... Our path is clear. A ruler who ignores the plight of the innocent is not fit to rule. I am still a member of the royal family. It is still my duty to protect my kingdom. I don't like where this is headed. But we're outnumbered. We can't fight them all. Well said, my Lady Solange. You have a firm but loving hand. Help! The monsters are attacking the orphanage! Not the orphanage! Take us there at once! Solange! We can't keep getting involved! Okay, now that that's taken care of, Zozo gets a level up, and Allie gets a level up, Solange gets Diddly Scott, and Allegro gets a level up. And we got ourselves new characters, Sugikage and Master T, and a Juggernaut. <laughs> but yeah, Sugikage and Master T, originally, they were not playable in story mode for the 3DS version. But as you can see, they are playable here in the Switch version now. It was always sort of weird because they are main characters, they do travel with you for the rest of the game. However, they just were not playable in story mode for whatever reason, I never understood that. But now they finally are, which is very, very cool. But here's the thing, I purposely did not look up how to play as either of them, nor have I actually played as either of them extensively. I played as them a bit in free mode in the 3DS version, but I tried my best to stay away from both of them because I wanted to sort of have a brand new experience with this game as well. Even though I wanted to be super informative with all the characters and everything, I sort of wanted to have that brand new experience like I'm playing a sequel to Code of Princess or anything like that. Like, there was actually talk about a Code of Princess sequel for PS4 and Xbox One. Uh, it said that the developers were interested in making one, but it was up to uh, Atlas or Nicholas if it was ever going to happen. And I'm not sure if that's ever going to come to be, but it, this is sort of my way of getting to experience a brand new Code of Princess game by having these characters that I don't really have any experience with. I do know, though, for a fact that uh, the first four characters have a certain attribute that no other main characters that we get will have. We still have some more main characters that we're going to get later on, but... Um, the first four are the only ones that have the ability to run s constantly. It's really weird, but for Sukikage, Master T, and any other characters we meet from here on out, they just have a dash attack. Like, they, they can walk normally, it's just that when they try running, they, they dash for a little bit and then stop. I don't know why that is, but uh, that is just sort of an unfortunate thing. Sort of a reason why I never really bothered to use these characters all that much, but... But according to Black Cat Fight, who is, uh, as far as I'm concerned, the world's greatest Code of Princess player, I may be the number one Code of Princess fan, but I will give him the honor and the title of being the number one Code of Princess player in the world, because he actually was number one on the leaderboards in the 3DS version, I believe he is in the Switch version as well. Uh, he made a tier list for all the characters in the game, and he believes that Suke Kage is the best character competitive-wise, so... Even though he doesn't have a, an, an entire running ability, you think that would completely hinder or ruin a character, but as far as he's concerned, Suke Kage is the best character in the game, so that's pretty interesting. Let's see if I could learn his skills and see what this character is all about. Okay, I gave Suke Kage and Master T pretty much the same equipment for now. Uh, I think in the next episode I'm going to work really hard towards customizing every character to where they have really unique equipment that actually benefits them and their independent skills, so... For now, we're just going to go to Tsukikage, and we're going to start our next mission. You sinful creatures! Get back at once! How dare you profane this place with your lust for blood! Sister Heck. I will cleanse this sin right out of you! And no talking back, or I'll cleanse you again! Whoa! That's one tough nun! We have to help her! Uh, I don't think she needs our help! Time to learn a brand new character! I'll have Tsukikage's attacks up on screen in case you, uh, they are the same from the 3DS version. I believe, though, that these characters do have new abilities added to the Switch version, since they are using the main story that they want to make them a bit more fleshed out, which is nice. But yeah, and hello, okay, um, sister... Sister Heck, on the other hand, as I will call her, because this is a children's program, uh, she is a kind of a super crazy powerhouse from what I've gathered. Hello, just, I like how the radish is just pushing her all the way across. 
But yeah, this is interesting trying to learn a new character. Uh, he's all about that, like, swinging motion of just, like, he seems very floaty, but then he does, like, the combo, and he's, like, a long reach with a sword. Okay, I can learn this. Something a bit interesting, like, hello, I can fly? Suke Kage, he can fly, he can fly, he can fly. I didn't even know that. Like, jeez, that's even funny. So he's very floaty and just interesting. And that was a very short mission, so I didn't really get to talk about him all that much. But yeah, it's gonna be fun trying to learn these new characters. Uh, something that makes it a bit easier is that the characters more or less have the same combos. Even if they aren't the same attacks and everything like that, they do have the same button combination for every one of their attacks. I think it's a bit different for Suke Kage onward though, because they have less combos they could do because they aren't as flushed out as everyone else, but they still have the ability to... Basically, if you know how to control one character, you should know how to control them all. It's just a matter of knowing what attack triggers what. Just know the button combinations that do things, and then you'll be good to go. And we got Sister Heck as a new unlockable character. We go into the next mission of light from above. You see that she is, indeed, another playable character. I don't know why they put her in front of Suke Kage, Master Tiana. Why she's so much more special than these two. I like the order of things better if it was just in order when we got them. But no, they have to ruin the flow and everything. Uh, we're not going to play as her quite yet. We're going to save that for probably the next episode. Right now, we're going to go to Master T. Oh, I didn't read their descriptions, by the way. Shooting star Suke Kage, a master of the intergalaxy blade. A style known for its impressive reach, yeah, I'll say. Uh, master T. Draken, a fierce UMA master whose attacks can penetrate almost any defense. And Sister Heck, or Sister Helga Wilhelmina, a short-tempered nun with powerful protection wards. Okay then, we are going to have fun exploring these characters later on, but right now let's go ahead and see what Mr. T is all about. Or Master T. He's evolved from his Mr. status, now he's got the Master. I don't know, let's just keep going. Get to the Elder at once. Now go. Yes, sister. Thank you. Let's get out of here. I don't know who you all are, but thank you for your help. You must be a blessing sent from above. I'm Princess Solange of Deluxia. We're just happy we got here in time. Oh my! The princess! I am Sister Helga Wilhelmina. But the children all call me Sister Hell. My lady, you're wounded. Drink this before it gets infected. It's made from fresh limes and hog sweat. Juicy. No, no I, I'm fine. Please, I, I'm allergic to fresh limes. You know, I think I skinned my knee back there, if anyone cares. Then be a man and walk it off. And no slouching. What? I, I wasn't... My heavens, princess, a zombie! Is that why you are here? I do excellent exorcisms. I'm not a zombie. Uh, what's the use? Oh. Uh. Hey, lady, she's a friend of ours, so back off! Please? Oh, hush. I haven't done anything yet. This is some devilry, no doubt. <sighs> What's happening? Get a hold of yourselves! Look, it's light from the stone! Anime laser! Time to kick some booty, a pit of the foo who messes with the orphanage. Master T, let's see what he's all about. Seems he's, I would assume he's a strong physical attacker, just from the appearance alone. Uh, whoa, okay, he had a very big bounce back from that though. Uh, oh god, he's got a laser beam, what? So he's got the strength of Solange, but the laser of Zozo. Interesting, and he's floaty too, he's, that's really interesting. Okay then, he's got the dropkick of Allegro. This guy's got everything! He's awesome! Oh my god! I like getting to experience these characters for the first time just because... Oh my god, I wasn't expecting him to have these attributes. I thought he would just be generic, strong, physical attacker, but... No, he's got like a Hadouken, Kamehameha, all that jazz. 
Uh, let's lock onto these things. He's a bit slow with his windup, though, so I guess that's sort of his downside. Uh, if I get rid of these guys a bit quicker. I wish that some of the other characters were helping me out a little bit. That's something that I kind of don't like about this game, is that even though we got this big cast of characters, and I very much appreciate the fact that they'll all be leveling up at the same time now, I still wish you could choose characters to assist you in battle, because there are missions that allow you to have other characters on the field, so it's not like a, a programming limitation sort of thing. It's just a matter of they didn't think about it or whatever. I wish they had, like, you could choose other characters to be background characters and help you out in battles, or like a JRPG or something like that. Unfortunately, you're all alone whenever you fight, which is very lame, but whatever. It's just gonna be more awesome when I defeat them all on my own. Go ahead and do the Hadouken or whatever. See if I can get in the right direction. Come on. Uh, let's see if I can get the lock on. I'm almost low on HP. Please don't die, Master T. That'd be a very unfortunate way to end off this episode. And especially if I just died to these little tomato bombs and I died. Cool. Well, at least we got more stuff to talk about. We got the big old spider. We could just try and focus on the spider and get rid of him because, like I said before, if you get rid of a boss, all the other minor enemies run away. So we can get lock onto him first, so that's good. Now we just need to hurry up and kill him. Got to slay the monster. Go and do that. He's got a 69 in there. Come on, just get the combos in there correctly. Uh, just trying to learn a new character. Yes, even though I am the world's biggest Code of Princess fan, I don't know everything about the game, so I need to learn some new things, and that's just the fun thing. Even though I, I love the game so much, I still get to learn new things about it, because every single character is playable, so I don't know how every single character plays. Maybe the spider thing, or maybe the tomato blob is, like, the ultimate character in multiplayer mode or whatever. Who knows? Let's just see if we can keep on attacking. Uh, we got that little, uh, kung fu attack. We got, uh, this. He's basically just, I pretty much, so he just press B when I'm in the air for him, though, with that. Can I, can I activate that? Press downward, okay, just trying to learn that. Um, going to go around here. Let's see if I can pick him around. And I believe in the 3DS version, uh, oh wait, no, it just happened right there. Uh, I was gonna say in the 3DS version, you can only lock on for a certain amount of times so and then it would wear off, but it just showed that it did that here as well. The lock on wore off. Uh, lock on locked off, I guess you could say. That does a bit of damage, I guess because he's still so low level that he's not the best right now, but I'm sure he'll be better later on. But I think if I remember correctly, Master T was last place on the tier list. On the tier list? Oh no. Uh, let's see if we can do this. I like his Japanese voice, is just such a ham. He's just like, whoa! -ho! Uh, let's see if I can just do a bit more damage. And where the fruit are you going? He's just so floaty. Like, I would not imagine to be speedy and floating. Like, he goes backwards whenever he attacks. I guess that. That's good because all of his, his attacks need buildups, so it's good for him to like get away if he needs to, but I don't need him to get away, I need him to be close and attacking. And I'm out of magic, so I can't do that Kamehameha anymore. So we can just do regular attacks to get away from the bombs. Uh, let's see if I can do a bit more damage. Uh, let's do the burst attack, see what that does. Uh, we're almost there, he's at 390. Let's just do a bit more damage. Friends. Oh, we got a treasure chest. Get that item. Uh, hopefully we don't lose that if we end up losing this. But let's have ourselves not find out because we're going to win this fight. Uh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, do damage, please. Damage, please. Damage, please. I need you to do damage to this guy. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm going to be using... I'd like to use every character and have them uh, all have equal appearances throughout the LP, but it's just that I have so little experience with these other characters besides the main four that I kind of don't want to use them. Uh, so just keep on doing that, and it's almost done. There we go. These guys, there we go. We're good. So hopefully I can just get better at them so I can actually use them throughout the game, and we'll have a good time for all. Now you see. The monsters are linked to the stone, and they grow stronger yet. But how? Mm. Unsure, grunt. Time is of the essence. Right. We must face Queen Destiny once and for all. Whoa, wait a minute. Before we rush off, let's talk about this. Don't worry, I'll protect you. I'm only a few XP away from becoming a Grandmaster Sage. Quit being a twerp. You could farm XP all day and you'd still be useless. We must increase our numbers. That just means more people we're gonna drag to their deaths. I'll live. But yeah, the rest of you are probably doomed. 
You know, Zozo, the skull jokes and undead jokes work a lot better when you say them in a cheery voice and follow it up with a yo-ho-ho. -ho. Just saying, I know it from experience or something like that. It just works a lot better like that. I don't know, it might just be a personal preference. Ahoy! I've got it! This is some real sagey stuff here, people. I am totally jealous! I wish I was you guys getting to hear me tell you this plan! Can you just say it already? What if we don't fight Queen Destiny? Let's destroy the stone. Then she can't summon monsters. The Sage's plan is worth considering. It sounds easy enough. I don't know about this. It's really old. Probably worth a lot. Can we destroy it? You give me the right tool and I can break just about anything. Even a woman's heart. <laughs> I'd hate to have to throttle you so soon after you became a sage. This is blasphemy. I must forbid this. That stone is the source of all magic. Don't they teach you anything in school? Wait, what? The gods place the Empyrean Stone atop the Tower of Ren. It's the source of all our magic. Why do kids these days try to solve everything with violence? It's kind of fun sometimes. If we gave it a cool name, like Operation Destroy the Stone, would you be on board? So the Queen is misusing a gift from the gods. It is a sacred relic. If we break the stone, we stop the monsters. But we lose magic? Tough break. Our feet will carry us down an honorable path. For we have stepped in duty. <laughs> <laughs> Approving grunt. Long ago, the gods gave us the power of magic. With it, we learn to protect ourselves. They gave us other gifts, too. Like this sword, the Deluxe Caliber. But if a gift now brings only suffering, then I say it is a curse. The Empyrean Stone must be destroyed. That is our quest. We must stop Queen Destiny, whatever it takes. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm inspired. Let's do it. You heard them! Operation Destroy the Stone is a go, people! Let me come too, Princess. You will surely need spiritual guidance, and I'm full of it. We would be in your debt. Mm -hmm. Indebted grunt. My Lady Zozo, do you mind if this woman joins our crusade? Whatever. She can come. Well then, let's move out! Master T gets some well-needed level ups, a lot of well-needed level ups. Allie gets to level 10, Zozo to level 10, Laker to level 9, and Sister Helga finally gets some level ups, even though she did absolutely nothing. And Suke Kage, we got a lot of singing characters we gotta go through. And we got the bomb bug, not the tomato blob or whatever I was calling it, the spider pod is also a playable character. But yes, we are now uh, on our way to destroy the stone. If we destroy it, then we'll stop Queen Destiny's plan, but at the same time, we'll destroy all magic, and it'll be completely gone from the world. So we're kind of left with an interesting choice that we have to make. We uh, have to stop this evil from happening, but at the cost of the same power that we're using to try and protect the world. Kind of interesting, but I guess we'll have to see where it leads us. Next time on Code of Princess, we're going to continue on our quest to destroy the Empyrean Stone. This is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see you all later. Good night.